We also have the ex amno treasurer, Azim Zabili. He is also a director there. We have the legal firm of Abdul Rashid Ashari, who also happens to be the Am Kappa Amno Vice Chief, while Faisal Abdullah, Kappa Amno Youth Chief, now Division Deputy Chief, is the Deputy CEO of the property developer and investment firm behind sale. And Faisal's father in law, Hon Isman, is also the former Kappa Amno permanent chairperson. So it's basically Barisan National, you have MCA, you have Amno, and you have SPDP. And here you are, Azim Zabali, treasurer of Amno. I am the treasurer of Pati Kelanan Raya. I have to go around organize dinners to collect money. The treasurers for Amno, SPDP are involved in Port Lang. They don't need to, to organize dinners. They organize much bigger things. Much bigger things where cost overrun amounts to 3.3 billion. And it goes down the line. Big guys and small guys. Even the lawyers, the legal firm that was involved, was also wearing two hats. Acting for Port Klang Authority, acting for Kuala Dimensity. We asked at the PAC, why did they proceed with the compulsory acquisition? They did not get the legal advice from the Attorney General. They got the legal advice from the Amno law firm. So, the conflict of interest is clear. Another Amno connection, that's the father and mother I was talking about. And Abdul Rahman Palil, the cooperative chairperson, he was the former Slango executive councillor, Samantha, state assembly person. This is the connection of Dato Siri Tiong. He holds 70% Vijaya Baru, which holds 100% of Colored Advances. He also holds 32% of Vijaya Baru Global, that in turn holds 45%, and is the main contractor to the turnkey developer. So, he is the shareholder, he is the director, he is the turnkey developer, he is the vendor, he is the main contractor to the turnkey developer. How many, how many times that the, it has been tried and tried and tried and we are paying for it. So the cost of the project has risen, has ballooned. 4.6 billion, include the interest 7.5, and there's no way Port Clang Authority can pay <laughs> if they have to continue and with the interest running, it's going to be 12 billion. This is the step as to how they started from 2001 right up into the end in 2009, 12 billion. Step by step, they were operating. As they have said, as Gandhi has said, that the world is enough to take care of every man's needs, but never enough to take care of one man's need. And that's the great thing. From 1.95 billion, it moves up because there was just no control. As I, as I showed you, he became the vendor, he became the turnkey developer, he became the contractor, and now it has, it's going to escalate to 12 million. So how did all of this happen? If you see at the top, the government, of, can you see? Okay, we have on your left hand side, 
at the top is the government of Malaysia. Underneath is the Ministry of Transport. Underneath the Ministry of Transport is the Port Klang Authority. And the subsidiary of Port Klang Authority is the Port Klang Free Zone that is supposed to be the owner of the project. Now, the Ministry of Transport, he plays a role. But before that, you have on the most your left hand side is the cooperative. Now the cooperative sold the land first to Vijayabaru and then to Kuala Namensi. That is the second box to the right and then the one in the middle is Kuala Namensi that bought the land. Under the agreement, it is supposed to be a deferred payment. Which is, the ex which is the excuse for the special value. But as any good businessman, you always use OPM. OPM is other people's money. So, they took the bond. They issued a bond to themselves. And then my friend Chan Kong Choi, I was giving a talk the other night, uh, that was in Desa Jaya. The, the people there are mostly Mandarin speaking. Chatkok Choi is Mandarin speaking. Unfortunately, I'm not so good at uh, Mandarin. But it looks like Chatkok Choi is not so good at English. Because he gave the letter of support and it turns out to be a guarantee. So he gave four letters of guarantee. Uh, sorry, three letters of guarantee. The first one was by Ling Leong Sik. It is with this guarantee that the bonds were released. So Kuala Dimensi got all of their money. There was no deferment. They didn't have to wait. From the proceeds, they got paid. And this is not part of the Price for the house before this one is where I went into the CCM. Anyone of you can go and you can take a look at Kuala Dimensis account in 1997. 1997 is the Asian financial crisis that crashed. And you find Kuala Dimensis is in financial trouble. It owes the bank the loans 113 million. And these loans went to Yanahata. 1997. I read this from the accounts. Subsequent to year end, the term loan had been in default. And all the rights, title, and interest relating to the loans were acquired by Pumurusan Dana Hatta National Bank. The company is also in the process of seeking its 753.1 acres of land in Pulau Indah. The company, together with the purchaser, is in the process of discussion with Dana Hatta to restructure the loan. Then you have 1997, they were already talking about the land in Pulau Indah to rescue Kuala Lamesi. 1997, if you will remember, Mr. Ling Leong Singh and his son were also involved with many public listed companies. A lot of people holding shares were hurt. So now you can see the link that this piece of land was used to save Danahata.